Illinois Stories is brought to you by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and by the support of viewers like you. Thank you. Hello, welcome to Illinois Stories. I'm Mark McDonald in Springfield at the corner of 7th and Lawrence. And if you're like me, you've passed by this immense building behind me many times and probably didn't think a thing of it. Well, in 1958, when this building was completed, the townhouse was known as Springfield's ultra-modern apartments. And boy, they were built to stay. In fact, they are on the National Register of Historic Places. And Anthony Urbano, who helped put this building on the National Registry, is gonna discuss a little bit about it with us. The Franklin Life Company wanted a place for its top executives mm -hmm. to live and also to rent out, you know, to make a little money. And this was the offshoot, wasn't it? This was it. Uh, Franklin Life, of course, is just kitty corner across the intersection. And uh, the president at the time, Charles Becker, uh, the rumor is, wanted a place to retire. So he uh, built this. But it was seen as an, as an investment in the neighborhood. This was Aristocracy Hill. And by the post-World War II era, it was flagging a bit in its in its uh, sort of luxury uh -huh. so Franklin life then envisioned this building as a way to stabilize the neighborhood its headquarters was here I mean it's just right across the street so it purchased most of this entire block everything but two lots of it and those two houses are still here and they designed and constructed this gigantic building um, as really a, an anchor to the neighborhood, a residential anchor to the neighborhood. They hired the Chicago firm of Shaw, Metz, and Dolio, uh, who was a very large architecture firm, to design the building. They had done many uh, high rises on the Gold Coast. They were a full service architecture firm that did many different kind of institutional buildings as well. The entire site was dedicated to parking lot for the building, as well as a private park which is beyond the building from our vantage, mm -hmm. and then the building itself. It rises 13 stories up from the street. This wonderful dynamic composition comprised of uh, two legs of an L, and each of those legs we can see from here. On the left is a stack of apartments that rises. Those are all three bedroom apartments. On the right, is a long leg that contains all the rest of the 87 units that uh -huh. the building comprises. And then the thing that connects them is this tall core that rises taller than either of them. And it's really the hinge around which those other two revolve. And Mr. Becker wanted a place like none other in Springfield, didn't he? He did, and he got it. Yeah, he, did. he got a, a prominent Chicago architecture firm. Uh, the original budget for this was 1.5 million. It quickly grew to two and a half million. Now that's not just sort of a 10% increase. That's, that's uh, quite a, a commitment. But it was seen as this really important gesture by a national company in its hometown right across the street from its headquarters. The design of the building is very different from the Franklin Life. This is sort of the, the ultra modern, as yeah. you said, uh, in styling, whereas Franklin Life is a very conservative neoclassical building. Uh, the materials are the same, Indiana limestone with brick, beautiful glazed blue brick on the base. Uh, those white columns were original, uh, originally Italian Carrera marble. And so no expense was spared on this building, just as in their headquarters, but it was a different style for a different purpose. Yeah. Much of it remains unchanged, Anthony, and we get a chance today with your help and some of the residents here to go through it and get a chance of what it looks like today. And thank you very much. My pleasure. Well, Anthony, talk about the high end of the high end. You know, and, and you and I mentioned, this wouldn't have been just the high end in Springfield. No. This would have been the high end in anywhere in the Midwest, probably. Anywhere, right? period. In uh, the U.S. Yeah, huh? when you look at, at photographs of other similar buildings from this period, from the mid-50s to the late 1950s, you know, not uh, how many buildings were coated in marble as this one is. Oh, I know. Look so this really does represent some of the, the you know, sort of most elaborate kinds of interiors that would have been done in that era. Uh, and in the modernist style, you know, you don't think of applied ornament in the modernist style. There aren't sculptures hanging in brackets mm -hmm. with leaves and everything. It's the high quality materials that really announce that this is a luxurious mm -hmm. building. And you can't get much higher quality than 
floor to ceiling marble, glass tiles, and uh, gold leaf wallpaper oh, originally gosh, down at that end. It's just gorgeous. It really is. Um, now this is this is the lobby. Mm -hmm. Everybody that almost everybody that goes in and out would come in and catch the elevator to their Absolutely. floor from here. Mm -hmm. This is oh come on through. It's fine. And, and uh, what they would do is they, they could stop, get their mail here, or check in, or out, mm -hmm. or whatever. Um, but you mentioned the marble, and I just want to take a look at this wall, for instance. This is an uncommon use of marble, or way to cut marble, isn't it? Yes, and, and we get to see it here on this wall, and also on the main wall behind us, which we'll see later. The marble was split and matched in such a way that the grain would actually continue through the entire length of the wall. So if you look around, you see the same or similar graining piece after piece, sometimes it's matched down the middle, mm -hmm. it's matched vertically, they would open it up like a book. So this one single wow. block of marble would have to be sawn and numbered, polished, made sure they stayed in order, and then installed in just the right way so that it all wow. comes together in this very elaborate a, kaleidoscopic pattern. It's a very specific sequence. And Absolutely. That, mar that, that grain has to be followed all the way from one side of the wall to the end exactly. of the wall. It's exactly. It's amazing. And these fixtures in here, not only in here, but in much of this building mm -hmm. are the original, the original not fixtures. Not only the original fixtures, but fixtures that were designed by the architects, Shaw Metz and Dolio, mm -hmm for this building. We have drawings in the sets that survive that show this, this light, these chandeliers, the mm -hmm. lights in the colonnade room in full scale drawings. Wow. And they were fabricated in solid brass, lacquered, mm -hmm. and here they have been yeah. for the last uh, 50 some Let's years. Let's move this way a little bit. Okay, now, there's uh, the, these stairs, of course, more marble. They go mm -hmm. up to, to number one. Those that's steps right. don't that's go right. all the way up. She's got these, her own, that's, that's Farrell's got her own entrance. Absolutely, there. and this staircase is such a spectacular piece of design. It's meant to be uh, a part of the lobby, it meant to be part of the composition of the lobby. It doesn't go anywhere, but it never needed to go anywhere. Its mm -hmm. function was to look good from the lobby. <laughs> so it's sort of like a giant piece of furniture here that only goes to one unit rather grandly. But this yeah. stairway to nowhere is something that a couple of other buildings did at the time. There's a, uh, a hotel in Miami Beach, the Fountain Blow mm -hmm. by Morris Lapidus, that has a very famous stairway to nowhere. Mm -hmm. And the legend is that the, you know, the, the, of the couples would descend for dinner, the males would go to the first floor. The, the, the women would stop at the mezzanine and then walk grandly down the staircase <laughs> to get to the first floor. And this is sort of that similar yeah. dramatic kind of entrance. This gives us a good chance to look outside because uh, every one of these apartments has a garden because mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. they have, there's so much glass in this building. Everybody gets their own view of the garden. And here you see there were water features here, and in the summertime there still would be where you could see where they would have fountains, et cetera, going on in the, in the courtyard. Absolutely. This was a private garden. It's walled all the way around and uh, with a secure access off of the lobby. These uh, pools that still retain their original tile um, uh, were uh, reflecting pools with small fountains and bubblers in them. And the original landscape design is, is it, although the plant material has changed, the hardscape mm -hmm. is very, very similar to the way it would have been originally. Very severe and architecturalized where the, the walls, the limestone, this is mostly limestone, um, really frame the plant materials so mm -hmm. that it is part of this overall modernist expression. Mm -hmm. And it, you look right out from any one of the balconies or the apartments and you see nature that has been, you know, sort of it's shaped terrific. into this modernist aesthetic. In every, you tell me, every one of the hard features in here is mm -hmm. original. It is. The, the lamps, the tables um, were uh, original we're to the building. Over, over Some here, of them have we? their original tags that say mm -hmm. the, where the destination was, the shipping tags. And these were selected for the building. They weren't designed for it, but they were designed by Edward Wormley for uh, Dunbar, which was a very high-end furniture maker in the 50s and 60s that did exquisite modernist furniture. And we have several examples of his work that survive in the building. And terrific. then the furniture, the, the soft goods, the upholstered pieces are new, but they are old designs, mm -hmm. mid-century designs, made new by Knoll, and they were selected especially for this room. They would because have been most contemporary they had, in the 50s. Exactly. Yeah. They have the same consonants, the same style as the wow. look of this room. And the way the marble tables match the marble wall. And it's it was just, very deliberate. Yeah, almost, um, yeah. You I, can see on this wall exactly the book, book matching unfolding from the center line here. Mm -hmm. It's just a spectacular uh, wow. ensemble. You don't need art on the wall. The marble is the art. Now, talk about art. I've never seen columns wrapped in tile. 
And this tile is original to the building. Mm -hmm. uh, we have drawings of it. This is uh, Pat Devere. This is glass that's been applied to these. These are structural columns, mm -hmm. but they've been wrapped in this exquisite decorative <laughs> mosaic. Wow. And these columns actually, actually swell in the middle. We can look at the original drawings and see that they're wider in the middle by two inches than the bottoms and the top. And that was a very sort of classical thing to do. So it would counteract the visual trick of columns looking narrower in the mm -hmm. middle. So it's betraying some no. of the architect's huh. original classical education. Now, the residents of this building, if this isn't rich enough for them, mm -hmm. they have a meeting room here called the Colonnade Room, which that is, is really right. pretty grand, too. Yes, it Let's is. There. <laughs> OK, Anthony, the Colonnade Room. This is where the card games or the board games mm -hmm. or just chatting. Whatever. having drinks, whatever. This is the community room for the building, was and still is. Mm -hmm. And this was entirely designed and finished. We have the drawings for this room that show the English limed oak paneling called out. Right behind you. These Look at it, it's gorgeous. Uh, custom designed uh, brass sconces mm -hmm. are in our drawings as well. The recessed lighting fixtures, these false French doors that are lit from behind, also mm -hmm. a part of the original design. So that's design. not natural light, I see. It is Those not. are actual light bulbs. Huh? That's correct. What a these neat are, effect. I love the opaque These are doors windows. that don't open to anywhere, but mm -hmm. they just give a decorative effect for the yeah. room. Mm -hmm. Original furniture survives in this room, not the chairs, but these tables. These are sheaves of wheat tables by mm -hmm. uh, Edward Wormley for Dunbar, mm -hmm. chosen for this room, as was the Parson tables and the scoop chairs. So it's an uh -huh. amazing collection. The scoop chairs are original. Are original uh -huh. to the building. That's oh, right. It's beautiful. And of course, down at the end, no community room would be complete without no, quite an elaborate bar. Uh, bar set up here. Absolutely. With uh, indirect light, more glass tiles mm -hmm. here, um, a padded bar. And of course, if you were of the abstemious nature, you could close this off entirely and pretend that yeah. it doesn't exist. Bars but, closed tonight. But who would want to do that? No, no, it's far no, more fun know. to just keep it open. Now, they were way ahead of their time because when you come into the kitchen, everything. He's stainless steel. It's, I mean, a, a top of the line, uh, well, more than a catering kitchen, if you will, a commercial kitchen mm -hmm. where every surface is stainless steel. We have a dishwasher and this incredible refrigerator that looks like a DeSoto. Um, yeah, it uh, is. Plate warmers. I mean, this really represents uh, the highest end of what was available. Yeah. yeah. And, and it still is the highest end. It still yeah, is the highest end, and it still survives, and it's still available for people to use. It's stocked with china and, uh, yeah. you know, ready Look to go. There. And that, that china is probably 50 years old. Probably. Or more. Yeah. yeah. Isn't this cool? What a neat experience. Well, you know, people actually live here. Absolutely. So we're gonna, we're, we're gonna we're gonna go into some of their apartments and see and see what they've done to them. The 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 footprint of most of these apartments has stayed the same as it was yes. you know, back in the fifties. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. so it's it's a, it's a great experience. Thank you, Anthony. My pleasure. Knock knock, Farrell. Here I am. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you. The door's come in. open. Come That's in. terrific. Come in. Thank you. This is thank you so much because this is you're letting us see one of the original apartments here it hasn't been changed not a thing you put your own furnishings in it of mm -hmm. course but but it hasn't been changed mm -hmm. much the bedrooms are the same mm -hmm. configuration and everything mm -hmm. in fact you have some of the same fixtures too yes don't you? yes how do you like it i like it we've been here oh i think perhaps 15 years mm -hmm. i really like it it's safe you have nice neighbors yeah uh, it's convenient to downtown yeah it's really everything i want yeah and, and it is, uh, when, when they built this in the 50s, mm -hmm. they, they built it to stay, didn't they? They built it yeah. to last, yeah. and it has, it has. You want to show us through? I do. Okay, let's go this way. What, it, again, one of the really nice things, now this is this would be a dining room, and that's what yes, you use it for? Yes, most people have the dining room furniture on this side. I prefer seating over mm -hmm. here. But that would and give you a nice view. Yes, yeah. it is. So this is the way I have changed it. And the living room and dining, both uh, lots of room. The terrific thing about these apartments is all the glass and oh, all the natural yes, light yes, that pours yes. in here. It's just wonderful. And this, of course, would be this. Would, this is your living area and that, or living room, uh -huh. and that's what that's what most people, I guess, would. You use know, it for. I have a hard time getting people down here. They tend to stay there. You know, <laughs> well, they want to be near the kitchen. <laughs> well, I guess, I guess, and they know the food is there. And you there. got your own patio. Look at I that. do. Yeah, with uh -huh. your, your it's climbers about a out there. Thirty-three nice? foot uh, balcony. Wow, that's terrific. And in the summer, I have plants and flowers out there, yeah. and a different arrangement of chairs. Yeah, it's nice. That's nice. It really is. Now this is a three bedroom unit, yes, right? Yes, it is. Okay, but well, one is an office to... that we are okay, using. Okay, well we'll get a chance to see that. 
But this is, what's nice here is the fact that you've, you have not changed the footprint of this place, and this is what it looked like when it was built in the 50s. Yes. And as you can see, I love family. I have pictures oh, everywhere. Oh, you have family everywhere. everywhere. You're very fortunate to have, uh, to have such a I big am. family and a loving family, too. I am. I, I don't exercise, but it's a great place to put purses. You've got your own bicycle there to put <laughs> yes. your purses on. This yes. is your master. This is your yes. master. Uh -huh. and this With a master bath. Always the master bath. And we're going we're to take a look in there. Go we're ahead. not going to go in there, but the camera can go okay. in there. Okay, I'll wait right here. Because we don't have room in there for all okay. of us. Okay, it's bigger than the other one. But it is sizable, and the nice thing about it, the reason we want to take a look at it is because you have retained the, the vanity and the fixtures and the bathtub and everything, and the colors, even the colors, mm -hmm. are the same as it was in the 50s. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very attractive. Yeah. It's kind of nice to see, uh, to see all that stuff retained. Because, you know, most people these days, they want all new. Change. You know, oh, Change. yeah, they yeah. want all new. And no, it's nice. I'm happy with it the way it is. Good for you. I do have to tell you about this little chair. Okay. It must be about 150 years old. It was a part of my grandparents' kitchen, <laughs> so I've enjoyed it. It's a, you're, you're, you tell me your dad was a big man, but he doesn't look like he'd fit in that chair. <laughs> and then my family. You got all this storage, and mm -hmm. you got family pictures, of course. Mm -hmm. All this storage would have been uh, would oh, have been it's in every room. Just the way it is. Yeah, just mm -hmm. the way it is. Every room. And this is a this is it's, a guest one of the guest yes, bedrooms. Yes, and it, it is. When your family comes to visit, they mm -hmm. they're very comfortable mm -hmm. here. Just, and it's good size. Yes, it is. They're all big. Mm -hmm. They really are. My youngest, uh, a daughter, uh, used this room uh, before college, and, and so she's in Virginia now with the rest of the gang out west and some east. So, You know, how, how forward thinking they were, um, you use this as, as like an office yes. now, and it, it actually is equipped as an office because it's got the built-in bookshelves yeah, it, it's, it's, and, and all the storage that you need for an office. So, so Mr. Becker and the architect that designed this were thinking, well, you know, this could be a bedroom, but it could also be used as an office. I think perhaps it was done later when people would decide to use it that way. Mm -hmm. And uh, it has worked beautifully. I asked my husband one time, it was his office, if I could just have two shelves for books, but mm -hmm. I took a few more. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, need, you need all those shelves. You yeah. got a lot of books, yeah. right? Okay. Let's go this way. Now, this is, a, like we said, it's a three-bedroom. And two bath, two and baths. we don't need to go in here because this is like the other bath, only a little smaller. Smaller, mm -hmm. a lot uh, smaller. And then the kitchen yes, is kind of interesting because it also has a lot of the original features that you would have seen back when it was built. Kind of a kind of a galley, a large galley kitchen. It is wonderful for a gang. I used to cook for a lot of people. I had five children, and so mm -hmm. for years I cooked for seven, and then they went away. Is and this the original color? Uh-huh. No kidding. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. uh, it is the greatest kitchen. It really is. You can have it cleaned up in no time at all mm -hmm. after having a good group. Mm -hmm. And I like, I like everything about it. You know, it's kind of nice to feel that what I have here is something I really love. It's true. It's home. Yeah. You know. Thanks for showing it to You're us. You're very welcome. You're very welcome. It was nice to meet you. Gary Creamer, what a great opportunity to come into your apartment because it shows what you can do. If you want to modernize one of these units, it shows what you can do. And you really did a great job. Thank you, Mark. Yeah. This, as we stand in the kitchen, of course, they didn't have these granite countertops and all that sort of thing back then. That's but from you were able to keep some of it, weren't you? That's correct. We kept the original cabinetry. It was Geneva. All steel, porcelain uh, yeah. coated. Mm -hmm. and, and that stuff, I mean, if you tried to buy that stuff today, it's probably not even available. It's not available. You'd yeah. have to buy it in the secondary market, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And over here, you know, you've got, you've been able to wire it, so you've got your flat screen television. You've right. got all the, all the modern amenities that you'd want. Correct. It's um, all and you get all of the natural light yeah. that, that all of the other units get, which isn't that terrific. It's wonderful. This is a, it's a great time out here in the spring and the summertime. It's a beautiful mm -hmm. view. E even the winter's not bad. Oh, it is not. I mean, it's a, it really isn't. It could be worse. <laughs> and you say the building's quiet. It's very quiet. You don't know you're downtown. It's hard yeah. to believe. It's yeah. one of the most quiet buildings I've ever been in. It is. It is it's so It's a phenomenal neat. place. It, we, we get a little a shot of your little daughter who's just, if it, what, people are wondering what the babbling is, there's a little Hi, girl DJ. In, in, in the house. Um, and of course, you put all new flooring in it as we go down. This is right. a two-bedroom unit, right? Two-bedroom unit. So we're gonna we're gonna sneak into the first bedroom here. You like your Mission Furniture, and sure I don't do. blame you. I think it looks terrific in here. 
Yeah. Um, and I mentioned the floors. You, you, this, this was probably either a tile or a linoleum floor before. But it was. You, it was all linoleum, mm -hmm. and uh, that all popped up when they came in to do the, the de demolition. Yeah. Oh, and popping up that linoleum's a, a job. It I'll was, tell you. Yeah. <laughs> and the little daughters, the little daughters' room here is really cool yeah. too. It's all updated with. Everything is so bright. Yeah. It's 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 just nice to know that you can take a '50s building. And make it look really contemporary, and right. it does. It does. It works, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. The, the 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 light fixtures with the fans, those weren't in originally. We we mm -hmm. put those in all wireless units to to modernize it mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. So it's a very comfortable place. Yeah, very yeah. And like you say, it's so close to everything. It's right downtown. Mm -hmm. And this, even the bathroom, they're very small, but we can show that that uh, you had an opportunity here to update it as. Right. We All had, you wanted to as well. Yeah, we put uh, European fixtures in. Uh, so that was interesting, getting getting hold of those. Mm -hmm. Local craftsmen made the cabinetry, all the woodwork. Wow. Very, very nice. Congratulations. You've you only had it finished for a couple of months, That's right? That's right, yeah. We just moved yeah. into it recently. Yeah. Well, thanks for the tour. It was it's my pleasure. We're, we're proud to show it off. Okay, Anthony, when you approach the penthouse, the hallway looks a little different. It does indeed. The penthouse, after you, the penthouse was actually built for and by the original Mr. Becker, right? Yes. And uh, he built it for his penthouse. That's right. And wow. And what a <laughs> penthouse it is. The oral history is that uh, he wanted to retire to a penthouse and there wasn't one in Springfield and so mm -hmm. he built one. Mm -hmm. And so one could sort of see the rest of the building as just simply supporting his penthouse, which is, yeah. you know, maybe yeah. an overstatement, but. He certainly built himself quite a quite a pad, as it were. It has recently been changed. It's been redesigned and, and refurbished. I think one could say restored in a way. Yeah. The, the the marble floor brought back. The the uh, fixtures in the bath. The entire bath actually uh, uh, restored. It's gorgeous. It, it's uh, really such a spectacular job yeah. that has been done here. It's, and of course, you get such great views from up here, you know, and you've got all this glass. The light coming in, the views, the balcony, which is similar on every one of these units that mm -hmm. stack up on this side of the building. Oh. It's just tremendous. It is terrific. And there's a lot of space with the high ceilings. I mean, yes. you really get the spacious feel. And that's another point about this being the penthouse is that the, there was license to, to give these ceilings a bit more presence. Mm -hmm. And also, the style of this particular unit changed from the rest of the building. The rest of the building has very simple, no moldings, flat panel doors, very high quality, but no applied ornament. Whereas here, panel doors and cast brass knobs and much mm -hmm. more elaborate, because Mrs. Becker preferred more traditional she, things. Yeah. Uh, and so the taste ran a little bit more towards the traditional. His and hers uh, bedrooms originally here. Mm -hmm. uh, wonderful closets with uh, mi uh, mirrored hinged yeah, doors. Yeah, yeah. The bathroom suite, which is as it as it was, uh, this is the same shape and dimension as the original bathroom. This, it's this remarkable. Is basically the original bathroom. It's been mm -hmm. restored. The marble, uh, the uh, uh, wonderful fittings in the bath and in the sink, uh, the the vanity, the jib doors. This is all uh, wow. as wow. as it was made for Becker, and uh, uh, it has been uh, beautifully redone, restored, really. And the the dolphin and again, head uh, yeah, shower. The dolphin head. Look in here. It's in here, and you've got, of course, marble head to, from from top to bottom with the I love the dolphin head. That's terrific. This is beautiful. This is very European as well. Kind of French provincial, I guess. And the other, the other, uh, uh, what would have been the other uh, bedroom, mm -hmm. the his and hers bedroom, mm -hmm. coming around to a powder room, and then back to the entrance hall. Yeah. And of course, this has been redone. You can see it's got the original marble floor, but. A new, uh, but a new, new vanity. Uh, onyx vanity, yeah. exactly. Gorgeous. Just exquisitely done. And then if you come back into the main hall here, you get a look into the kitchen, and you can see that they've uh, they've re they've redone all that. I don't think any of those cabinets. No, are the and and the kitchen had been redone previous mm -hmm. to this. The the historic kitchen, uh, as it were, did, yeah. didn't exist when this work was done. Wow. So, and this all sort of represents a, a new envisioning of of the, uh, the 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 kitchen space. And it really is a, a phenomenal phenomenal apartment. What a living space. Well, Marcia, about eight years ago, you and Anthony Rubano undertook to get this building put on the National Register of Historic Places, and you got it done, didn't you? Yes, we did. Was it hard? Uh, yes, it needed the two of us, for sure. We had both thought about it separately, and I had no knowledge about the architectural aspects. Yeah. And um, he uh, had no access to the decision-making 
structure of the condo, so he didn't know how to finesse it, so it was possible for him to do that. Mm -hmm. But uh, it was a good match. We found each other and we worked on it together, and it was a pretty easy task. Mm -hmm. Once we got into it, you just have to set aside the time. But I got quite fascinated. My part of it was the social history of Springfield and the place of the townhouse within that social history. And I found that very, very yeah. interesting. And then the history of the building itself. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, the literature from that time, and, and what I'm looking at is a pamphlet that, that uh, the townhouse folks sent out to mm -hmm. publicize the building of the building. Right. Springfield's ultra-modern apartments. Yes, it And they really were, was. weren't they? Yes, absolutely. They were fantastically modern at the time. Yeah, and, and, and well-built. Yes. Yeah. No, this is like... Well, I th think it's probably built like the power plant. I'm told it's built to industrial specifications, and it's st re still reinforced concrete. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. people who take out walls and things like that, you know, they're they're really they got uh, their work cut out for adventurous. Them, yeah, yeah. And and you uh, you and Anthony were able to secure a plaque, so if people wanted to, they can see the plaque at the entrance to the building. Oh which yeah, says, you know, it's no good you know, to do it if you don't have that's a right, plaque. You have the plaque for that sure. tells people that sure. this is a yeah. historic site. Well, you know what? It also it does more than just make people. In the, in the apartments feel good. It really does delineate this as a significant addition to the city of Springfield, and mm -hmm. it's going to stay that way. Yeah. No, it's a very, it's a very uncommon building in this area. In mm -hmm. all of central Illinois, there is no other Chicago-style high-rise, and that's why I live here, because uh, I came here from San Francisco, and I was used to an urban environment, yeah. and um, I didn't know whether I would stay here, so I bought a house that I knew that I could resell, but when it came time to retire, I thought, I'm yeah. going here. Yeah. Because it's like being in Chicago. You look out and, you know, yeah. you don't have Lake Michigan, but you have yeah. greater Springfield. Yeah. So yeah. I like living downtown. That's yeah. good, too. Well, thank you. There are presently 87 units in the townhouse. Some are studios, some are one bedroom, two bedroom, three bedroom, and some of them are still available. With another Illinois story in Springfield, I'm Mark McDonald. Thanks for watching. Illinois Stories is brought to you by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and by the support of viewers like you. Thank you. For a DVD copy of the program you've just seen, send 1995 to Network Knowledge, P.O. Box 6248, Springfield, Illinois 62708. Be sure to include the program name, subject, and when the program aired. You can also order with your credit card by calling 800-232-3605.